All right, Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule impeccably well. And Shalom to the Akim that's pushing this truth and sincerity across the four winds. All right, it's the brother Yakanan from the uh, GMS um, London camp. And I just want to get into um, a quick video, which is going to be, um, you know, really covering the topic of um, handling, you know, this wisdom, knowledge and understanding that you acquire, you know, when you come into this truth, you know, when Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is dealing with you, you know, when the Lord is supping with you, you know, there's a lot of revelations that you find out, you know, there's a lot of revelations that you find out. There's a lot of things that you're going to find out in this truth that are going to be, you know, very bitter to your mind. And, you know, some things are going to be very hard to stomach, especially when you're coming from out of the world. All right. But one thing we got to bear in mind is that, you know, the sweetness of this truth, the sweetness of knowing, you know, that you're an Israelite, that you're not, that knowing that knowing that you're, you know, you're Yasha Allah. And that, you know, you're of the stock of the Lord's chosen people. It really trumps all of the negative aspects that we got to go through. All right. But those negative aspects is what molds us in this truth. And that girds us and prepares us, you know, for the tribulations that are to come. Because you got to remember that the scriptures say, you know, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of of heaven, man, into the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, right, so we're going to have to go through a lot of things before we can acquire that kingdom, you got to go through the rough before you can enjoy the smooth, all right, now that's, that's, that's like anything in life, man, you got to start at the bottom, you know, they tell you in the world, you got to start at the bottom and you got to work yourself up to the top, well, that's exactly what Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is doing to the elect of his people, he's making us start from the bottom, right, on this side, and then we got to, you know, do what we got to do to make it into the kingdom, man. Right? That's why the scriptures say, work out your own salvation, you know, with fear and trembling. You got to work out your salvation. You got to put the work in. And in, in, in the course of doing that, you're going to go through, you know, all kinds of trials and tribulations and, you know, building events that are going to build your character and mold you into who the Lord wants you to be, man. All right? Now, this is um, Revelations chapter 10 and verse 10. And it says, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up right and it was in my mouth sweet as honey so this book is talking about the scriptures it's talking about the wisdom knowledge and understanding of this holy bible that we have man all right and he's saying when he ate it up so when he consumed it you know it was sweet as honey in his mouth man right because when you first come into this truth you get really excited man Right, you find out, as I said, you find out that you're an Israelite, you're a prince of the power, you find out the truth, man. Right? When you've been so long in the dark and then all of a sudden, you know, you actually find out the truth, you're very joyous, man. I know I was very joyous when I first found out this truth, you know. But then, you know, at, at, at that at that point of finding out all this wonderful information, you know, finding out that we're the Israelites, finding out that there was a conspiracy against our people. You know, Psalms 83, finding all these things out, then you realize, hold on, then there's a flip side to this, man. All right? And what's the flip side? And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Because then you got to consume that information. Then you understand, well, hold on. Then, you know, what are we going to do about this, man? Well, that's when you start to understand that, hold on, you got to now, you know, put on your garment. You know, you got to soak up this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And you got to go out on the highways and the byways. You find out you're going to start catching hell. You know, you find out that people are going to start hating you, you know, reviling you, you know, saying all manner of things about you. You know, that's when the flood of, of, of bad news and bad experiences comes in, man. But what does the scripture say? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, man. So he ain't just going to give you the sweet and not give you the, you know, the balance to counter that, man. The Lord is a just power. So you have to go through the, you know, the, the, you know, the hot and the cold, man. How you going to know what cold is if you've never experienced hot? And how you going to know what hot is if you've never experienced cold, right? You got to know both sides of the spectrum, man. You know, that's where um, the, the, the book of Ezra comes into play, man, you know, which is a very good book to read is, you know, reasoning, you know, with the Lord asking certain questions, you know, 
And it says, um, in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. All right. So, he, you know, his belly was bitter, man. When you consume, which really talk about your mind, man, because then you're going to be lamentating on certain things, man. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be depressed. Because why? Because you know now that, oh, all right, we're supposed to be on top, but we ain't on top. And the so-called white man is on top because we're in his kingdom. And, it's, you know, it's his time to rule. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And he covers the faces of the judges. Who are the judges, man? We're the judges. All right. And he's covered our faces. So then you got this truth, you got this wealth of understanding, you know, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But, you know, what, what do we have to do? We got to preach, man. Right? We got to preach this word and we got to con convert more hopeful elects, man, into this truth. All right? But that's the bitter side, man. All right? Because you're catching all the hell at the same time and you're in this man's kingdom, you know, you're cursing him out. Right? And, you know, you're, you're, you're having to live in his in his social structure with all this information in your mind, man. And sometimes you got to suppress the information, you know, because you're working in his kingdom. And you might be at a job, you know, you, you can't just let loose on everything you know. That's not going to benefit you. you got to be, you know, wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You can't go around, you know, um, um, smacking Edomites in the face, taking out your aggression on them. You can't do that, right? The, the Lord said, wait ye upon me until I rise up to the prey. Right? So you can't out, out of course. You, you got to wait and you got to fall in line, man. Right? And that's also hard to do at times, man. You know, you got to be ruled over by the so-called white man, by the devil himself. You got to be ruled over by the devil and you got to keep your composure. And right? You got to smile in his face sometimes. You know, you got to supplant because, you know, that's what Jake do. We supplant. All right? But sometimes it could be hard to do that. Depends on the brother. Right? And it says, and I, as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter, man. Because he consumed that, you know, that wealth of, you know, wisdom, knowledge and understanding that the Lord bestowed upon him, man. And that's the same thing that happens, you know, to, to, to all brothers in this truth. You go through that stage. Now, this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. And it says, for in much wisdom is much grief. So in much wisdom is much grief, man. But why is that, man? Because it depends, you know, where we're in, in a fucked up kingdom, right? This ain't going to this ain't going to apply, you know, in the kingdom of heaven. Right, because we're gonna have all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We're gonna be made perfect in the kingdom of heaven. And that wisdom is not gonna be grief in the kingdom of heaven, man. Because we are gonna be ruling. But in this kingdom, right, in much wisdom is much grief, man. Because if you know the right thing to do, right, and the people on top in charge are doing the opposite of righteousness, that's grief, man. Homosexuality is grief. Right? Having children in this kingdom is grief, man. Right? Why? Because, you know, Haggai 1 and 6, you know, you're earning wages to put into a bag of holes. Right? So you can't even support your family properly, man. That's grief. All right? Knowing that you're an Israelite in this system, right? And not being able to actually fully, you know, follow the Lord's statutes and commandments, that's grief, man. Right? And he that increases knowledge, increases sorrow. The more you learn in this truth, the more sorrow you increase, man. The more you find out about the wickedness of the so-called white man and the other heathens is the more grief you get, more. The more you, you know, see how through, you know, you Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans are, you know, the two thirds of you, that's grief, man. You know, when we look, well, hey, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, that's grief, man. Right? Because our righteousness is as filthy rags. Right, so even sometimes I look in the mirror myself. I'm like, look, man, this this place needs to be done away with, man. Right, I want to, I want to, I want to get out of this filthy flesh, man, and I want a new body, man, because this place and the people in it are contaminated, man. So that's grief, also, man. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth. In knowledge, increaseth in sorrow, man. So that's why the scripture is talking about the sign and the crying for the abominations thereof, man. Right? That's being in a state of sorrow. That's being in a state of grief, man. That's the perfect mindset that you got to be in to abide in this truth. Now, I ain't saying you got to be like that every single day, you know, and walk around with a screw face, you know, and, you know, walk around in a, in a permanent bad mood, right? Because you still got to function, Right, and you still got you still got to roll with the flow, so to speak. All right, we got to be stronger than that, man, because uh, redemption is nigh. That's also something we got. To, that's the balance, man. Redemption is nigh, man. So we also have things to be very glad about, man, because Yahweh Shem Shai is not going to leave us in this current state for much longer. That's something you should aspire to actually think about, man.
You know, that should be always on your mind. The fact that Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is actually going to deliver us out of this grief. Deliver us out of this sorrow. Right? Deliver us out of this wicked man's system. And wipe away all tears, as it, as it, as it um, states in the book of Revelations, man. All right? Now, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men when the living will lay it to his heart, man. So it's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, man. Right? It's better to be in a constrict, in constrict, constrict, like, yeah, contrite and um, inflicted spirit than to be in, in a spirit of mirth, man. All right? Because when you're, when you're in a, a serious, you know, mind state, or if you're like a fasted mind state, you know, for brothers that have fasted before, what does it do, man? It heightens your senses and it makes you more spiritual, right? You're denying yourself off of carnalities in this world and your, and your mind and your body is getting more spiritual in that process, man, right? So that's why it is very important to also fast and it's very important to constantly pray. The, the scripture says, cease, you know, cease from praying, man. Cease, cease roughly paraphrasing, so lucky. I can't remember the, the actual wording, but um, basically don't pray. Don't stop praying, man. You know, always be in a constant mode of praying to your Harabar Shim Shai. You know, putting up curses on our enemies. You know, praying that the Lord makes you more spiritual. Praying that the Lord, you know, increases you in the spirit and, and, and you know, makes you more wise, man. Spiritual gifts. The scriptures, you know, talk about desiring spiritual gifts. That's what we're supposed to be asking the Lord for. All right? Spiritual gifts, man. That we can grow in this truth. That we can get better at reading at camp. That we can get better at speaking at camp. You know, that we can get, you know, whatever you ask for, ensure that it's spiritual and it's going to aid you in this truth, man. And how about Shim Yao Shai? You know, if you're sincere, he he he's going to supply it to you, man. All right. Now, this is um, Revelations 2 and um, I'll start from 25 and this is the last scripture and then we'll close out. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him. I give to him will I give power over the nations, man. So that's a good incentive for us to stick in this truth and hold fast, man. Right? To this wisdom, knowledge, understanding that we have. Yeah, it can be grievous at times, man. Right? That we gotta endure and we gotta make sure that we're doing all we can to make our calling and election sure. Alright? Verse 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father, man. Right? So Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Shai on the right hand of the Lord is also waiting, man. Right? The Lord is waiting, man. It's only been two days, you know, since he was crucified in the spirit, man. All right? It's only been two days, man. Right? According to that time in, in the heavens. Right? So the Lord's anger and his fury, you know, his righteous indignation, I can assure you is still fresh, man. And the Lord is waiting, man. Right? And, 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 and Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai, they're enduring... You know, the wickedness that's going down on this earth. We're not the only ones that are enjoying it, man. The Lord has been enjoying it for, you know, pretty much from the time we went off. You know, the Lord's been enjoying that, man. That's why the scriptures say the Lord is long suffering. All right. So we got to remember that, man. We're not the only ones that, that's enjoying this, you know, the so called white man and the wicked. You know, the scriptures say the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Right, every single day, we haven't, we we don't even have the the type of anger that Yahweh Shem Yahshai has on these wicked man, on 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 you on you so-called white people, you Edomites. All right, so um, you know, I'll close out, you know, on that. Um, Lord willing, um, this lesson was edifying, and I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Shem Yahshai, and you know, double honors to the apostles, a great millstone that ruled impeccably well. And um, I would also like to say shalom to you brothers out there that are listening and learning in truth and in sincerity. All right, shalom.